Everyone can change their nature, Morty. It's what defines our species. Look at Iron Man. That actor was an animal in the 90s, literally waking up in bushes. His agent had to catch him with a butterfly net. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Rick and Morty Season 5 Episode 4 video. There were so many crazy references and Easter eggs during the episode. We'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. We're doing a giveaway for Rick and Morty merch. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite Easter egg or reference from the episode on the video or your favorite WTF moment because it was littered wall to wall with crazy references. But careful for spoilers, if you have not seen the episode yet, we'll be talking about everything. I'll just start at the beginning of the episode and we'll work our way through shot by shot. And I'll just number these Easter eggs and WTF moments as we go along. Starting with the episode title, Rick Dependence Spray, which is a reference to the movie Independence Day. They're actually releasing the episode a week after America's July 4th Independence Day. So we just had that big holiday. But the plot of the episode was actually more of a reference to this movie. It's an actual real movie called Killer Sperm from Outer Space. You can make all the jokes about this season being the horniest Rick and Morty season of all. Like, Sex Dragons was a big deal, but they're taking almost all the season 5 episodes to next level. But Dan Harmon said that a lot of the Chud storyline during the episode, sort of like the B storyline with all these horse people in the sewers, wound up making it into the episode to purposefully highlight just how ridiculous the overall plot was. Even when they're getting hauled in by the horses, Morty says, this is out there even for us. Like the writers referencing that the overall storyline with the Chuds, the monster sperm, like this is almost too ridiculous of an episode even for Rick and Morty. And Rick answers saying, shh, be quiet, they can hear you, referencing the Adult Swim and the Turner Network's executives in real life that manage Rick and Morty. So it felt like a lot of the over-the-top jokes were over-the-top on purpose, highlighting just how ridiculous the episode was in a really meta way. They were also parodying a lot of low-budget 80s horror slasher sci-fi picks too, especially with this giant sperm plot. But the cold open begins with Morty at Beth's horse hospital trying to get Beth to hurry up and finish work so that they can go see their movie. They were referencing the Black Widow movie, which actually just got released last week, because Beth says, let's go see what the new Marvel movie that you're all jizzing over is, which also plays into the whole idea of all the Morty sperm during the episode. It almost felt like it was a requirement of the episode that in every single scene, at least one of the characters at some point makes a reference to jizz. They made fun of Marvel a couple times during the episode, like that Robert Downey Jr. joke that I put at the beginning of this video. They've referenced Marvel a couple times already this season in episodes, and I talked about it a little while ago, but the whole idea is that Dan Harmon has been telling jokes about how Marvel has been stealing all the Rick and Morty writers the past couple of years, because several of them are now working on big Marvel Phase 4 projects, like Michael Waldron is the showrunner on the Loki series right now, and he's writing the Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness movie. The whole premise of the Loki show is kind of similar to the premise of Rick and Morty, with many versions of the Loki character from alternate universes. The writer from Pickle Rick in Season 3 is now the showrunner on the She-Hulk Marvel series, and then Jeff Loveness, who wrote the first two episodes of Rick and Morty Season 5, is now writing Ant-Man 3 Quantumania. So if it feels like there are a lot of Marvel jokes during Season 5, it's probably because of that. But then Morty locks eyes on the machine that they use for artificial insemination for basically milking male horses and being the 14 year old that he is immediately volunteers to work there so that he can use it to jerk off as much as possible. He's like a savant when it comes to finding new ways to pleasure himself. They don't really give you an idea for where this episode falls in the timeline or if it's after the events of last week's episode. You'd think that he'd be heartbroken, but he's a 14 year old kid so touching himself comes as naturally as breathing. And using a giant horse machine like this isn't even the grossest thing that he's done to get himself off. That would still probably be the doll from Raising Gazorpazorp way back in season one. To be fair, they did take the joke about Morty and Summer's chud baby way further during this episode. Like, now it's just alive in space out there somewhere. But Morty legit still has a living son, Gazorpazorp, out in the world. He's still alive until they confirm he's dead. So this is not the first time for any of this WTF stuff for him. It's just the first time that it's gone this far off the rails spectacularly. Dan Harmon made a big Jumanji reference, like at the end of the first Jumanji movie when everything goes completely off the rails. Then a week goes by of him using that machine. He's drinking all the vitamin C. That's a reference to it supposedly boosting blood flow and helping with erectile dysfunction. So it's just the writers joking that Morty has been using the machine so much that his junk is probably about to fall off, which is a very Morty thing for him to do. When Rick explains his plan to create the bioweapon to use against the Chuds, it's sort of them setting up this weird B storyline during the episode where they explain that this race of Chud horse people has been living in the sewers for over a hundred years and there's been this Game of Thrones level shadow war that the American government has been waging with them, like this cold war that's been going on for the last hundred years. 
like I said, Dan Harmon kind of explained this whole horse person storyline as a product of how ridiculous the episode got. Like, okay, we wanted it to feel as ridiculous as possible. And if you're not familiar with the reference, CHUD is actually an acronym. It's based on a movie, C-U-H-D, which stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. In that old low-budget slasher movie, the CHUDs were former humans who were mutated by radioactive toxic waste. And I think one of the funnier things in the episode is they never fully explain where these CHUD horse people originated from. Like, how did they get created? Where did the first CHUD come from? Um, the way they set them up during the episode, this backstory they create for them, they could do a whole spin-off series with the Chuds. The only thing they didn't do during the episode that I was kind of expecting though was to have Beth comment on the Chuds themselves, the horse people, because she's so obsessed with horses. It seemed kind of weird that she didn't find them more interesting or question their existence at all. But again, I think that was just part of the joke. Like, this isn't supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be over-the-top ridiculous. Like, at no point in the episode do any people of any authority, even the president, question their existence. They just keep referencing this shadow war that they've been fighting against them for the last hundred years. A couple of you were also asking if the Chuds were meant to be a reference to Bojack Horseman because he's kind of a horse person. And the Rick and Morty people are friends with the Bojack Horseman people in real life. They could have been referencing some Bojack stuff here, but I didn't hear anything specifically about that. They said that the whole joke with Morty doing everything in his power to not allow Rick to find out what he's been doing, they said that this was a big problem when they were developing the episode because they didn't like the idea of everybody, the audience, and Morty knowing something that Rick did not know. But the way they build the joke up, you know it's going to blow up in their face, and it does, literally this time. They're not really clear on what otherworldly forces Rick was referencing, but the green fluid that he's using looks like his portal gun fluid. It all the giant monsters are meant to be a reference to the movie Killer Sperm from Outer Space. The movie literally is just a bunch of them from outer space in search of new plants to colonize, and they view the Earth as a giant egg waiting to be fertilized which they reference again at the end of the episode, also with all the Grand Canyon vagina references, like literally and metaphorically trying to impregnate the Earth. I do love the look on Rick's face here, though, when Morty is so willing to let Rick take the blame, like, wait a minute, what? Aren't you usually the one to take the blame for stuff like this? It's just that he's so thrown off at the thought that maybe Morty didn't do something wrong in this moment. In the car, Rick claims that he ran over their neighbor, Gene. No idea if he's dead, just because the car runs over a large bump that he says feels like Gene. He's the next door neighbor from season three who was trying to butt in when Morty and Beth were arguing. Pretty much all the neighbors on their block are either dead or being chased around, and they never really address how they deal with that going forward later in the episode, but I think it kind of plays in with the theme of the episode itself being so over the top ridiculous. Like Summer and Morty's baby is still alive in outer space. It's like the new Star Child because of all the 2001 Space Odyssey references. To say nothing of the giant race of horse people living underground. Rick calls them space sperm, like I said, a reference to that killer sperm from outer space movie. Summer and Beth both wonder how big that means that space dicks are. They sort of pay that off later with the US president too. Like, man, I wonder how big space dicks are. I think the funnier thing, though, in this scene is when Rick says, oh, I've seen them before. They actually exist. They're a real thing in outer space. So apparently they're just space sperm flying around in the Rick and Morty universe. Then the U.S. president is back for the rest of the episode. He calls for Rick's help again, just like season three, episode 10. Keith David was back for a cameo scene during episode two earlier this season, but it was just for like a really brief scene. This time it's the whole episode. There's also other trailer footage with him doing other stuff with this giant turkey later in the season. So apparently the president is in a bunch of episodes this year. They take them back to the same secret tunnels and bunker under the White House from season three, episode 10, although they don't reference any of the special rooms that are hidden down there. Morty tells Rick that sometimes you have to wipe off your problems and toss them in the trash. Another reference to jerking off. There were a thousand of those in almost every single scene just because of the whole premise of the episode. Rick references cosmic DNA, Yeti, Chupacabra, and implies that both Stonehenge and Ancient Rome all were sites related to sperm from outer space. Then, like I said earlier, the president references this giant shadow war, this conflict that the U.S. has been having with the Chuds for the last hundred years or so. And because they're trying to tie this together with the whole Morty lie storyline, he's ready to blame the horse people for the sperm and start an all-out war. When he tells Morty to blow the whistle, toot toot, and talk about Rick, that's just a joke about him being abused by Rick. Like, we all know Rick cares about Morty and the family, but a lot of the adventures that they have do involve Morty being abused in some way. But to be fair, a lot of the abuse that he suffers is because of problems that he himself creates, especially in this week's episode. Then sort of playing into the idea of him lying through the first half of the episode, Morty says that America invented apple pie and lasers. He's only half lying there because the first working laser was created 
created in America in the 1950s, but apple pie was supposedly created in England back during the 1300s. Then when the president tells him he dodged a personal drone strike, that's just an Obama joke about Obama ordering a lot of drone strikes during his time in office. The whole Professor Shabubu character I think is meant to be a joke on Jeff Goldblum's character from Independence Day. He's being played by one of the celebrity cameos in the episode, Kyle Mooney from SNL. There were a couple celebrity cameos who apparently is some sort of expert on sperm. And a lot of his dialogue in the episode seems like a parody of Jeff Goldblum's dialogue in Independence Day when he was trying to explain everything to the president. They make the whole joke about them going to the Grand Canyon because they think of it as America's vagina, like deep gash in the ground. In the poster that he pulls out, which seems like he just bought it off a random shelf, says America's G-spot, as if that's the Rick and Morty universe slogan for the Grand Canyon. And you notice when they set Beth up for this big joke, you look at Jerry and he's the only other one in the room here besides Beth that doesn't immediately get the reference. The president tries to come up with a whole bunch of sexualized names for them like orgasm goblins. In the version of the episode that I was watching was actually censored so they kind of bleeped all the other names so I wasn't able to hear all the names that he listed off. But then they call back to that later in the episode when they're out with the marines and nobody can agree on what they're going to call them just referencing all the different names that the president listed off. But all the names that he does come up with are meant to be references to jerking off. Then they keep playing up the Morty lie, shooting the giant sperm the minute they say they're going to analyze the DNA, claiming that it had a gun, and now obviously this just goes completely over the top. Like clearly everyone could see that the sperm wasn't holding a gun, it wasn't even capable of holding a gun, but the president just buys it on the spot because they keep building up to this whole reveal of Morty's confession later in the episode. But the way they talk about it is kind of misleading, like the president says Morty would never lie so I'm going to believe everything he says, but the thing is that Morty lies all the time on the show. Morty then comes up with a plan to nuke every last one of them before anyone has a chance to discover his lie. And they set up that whole slow burn joke with Jerry being helpful by just getting everyone water during the episode like see, see I'm helping. They set up the joke with the sexy kickboxing with the sperm queen which feels like a very specific reference to a cheesy 80s sci-fi movie. I couldn't find the actual movie so if you think you know what they're referencing with this just write it below in the comments. But they do pay it off later when the queen's like too bad you don't have any sexy kickboxers with you. They set up the whole joke with the trope of marines in action movies like this getting killed off really quickly like red shirt style. They introduce Blazin the ninja who seemed kind of like a G.I. Joe reference just like generic army ninja reference. But the name Blazin, the reference to fire, the bandana, you could think of him as like a backdoor Naruto reference and snake eyes would typically cover his face. Overall he just felt like an amalgam of a bunch of different references rolled into one. They make the joke about the difference between catapults and trebuchets because Morty is the only one on the plane apparently who doesn't realize the difference. Trebuchets are kind of like catapults on steroids. The mechanism that they use for throwing things is way different. They throw much bigger things way further. The marine makes a reference to needing a fat pee which is another dick joke. Then after they can't settle on one of the president's names for the monsters he says they're going to call them Krispy Kremes with a C instead of a K which is also another reference to jerking off. They introduce the sticky character who can sense that Morty is his father with his junk vision or whatever they're calling this version of heat vision, his detection. I think the only reason why he looks different, like they gave him an eye, they made him a little bit pinker, they gave him two tails, is so that later when there's a bunch of them in the frame you can recognize who he is. The president references Jerry being helpful again, calling back to that earlier joke. He also apparently thinks that a lumberjack in the morning in foxes at night want pants. I'm not sure what the fox wearing pants is meant to be a reference to. But Summer sets up the whole storyline with them using her egg to lure the monsters into a trap, which is another callback to the plot of the movie about killer sperm. They set up the whole ending with Kathy Ireland and Blazin's thong when he winds up killing himself through incompetence and reveals that he's wearing her thong because apparently it's super comfortable. And he can also suck himself off, trying to get Morty to help him before he actually dies. The Sports Illustrated that he pulls out is also meant to be a version of Kathy Ireland's real cover issue. Like this is an actual real thing. They changed the pose a little bit, but it's still the yellow swimsuit and it's the 25th anniversary issue. Then based on the Queen's explainer later in the episode, the reason why the monsters are able to disable all of Rick's weapons is because the Queen says they have Morty's knowledge, like he somehow passed them all of his genetic memory. So they know everything that Morty knows and they use it to counter all of Rick's tricks. The visual look of the Queen kind of seems like they're going for a Krang Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference with the way she has that tiny mech that she's walking around in. She's the one who outs Morty's lie claiming that they're going to use him to create an even bigger army, conquer the earth. I also love his reaction when Rick calls him out on it, like how was it? And he just answers fantastic as he's crying on the ground, as if all this trouble that he caused was somehow worth it. 
Rick then makes a Star Wars Empire Strikes Back reference calling himself Hand Job Solo because he's frozen in a very carbonite looking storage device. The Queen makes a reference to all the times that Morty jerked off before, which is a lot, talking about all the millions of sperm who went to their graves inside dirty socks and landing strips of toilet paper. Very specific references. I also love the way Rick reacts here when they start milking Morty. He rocks the prison like he's got some secret escape plan, but then is like, nope, I just did this to get out of your eyeline so that it wouldn't get weirder than it already is while this is happening. When Rick says the monster army heading to Vegas tracks, that's just a joke about how debaucherous Vegas is. And then later when they cut to the president and everyone partying in Vegas, they make a ton more similar references. Like he says that even though they have this giant human egg to lure them here, Vegas by itself should have been enough. Later when they're spraying down the place with a bunch of semen, Summer asks, where did you get all that? The president just shrugs and says, it's Vegas. I also think that them partying here in Vegas while this is happening, even though the world might end soon, seems like another Independence Day movie reference with all the people partying, despite the fact it's the end of the world. Then they set up the whole joke with them inadvertently creating the baby with Morty and Summer. You have to imagine that Glasses Morty from the Citadel of Ricks would probably be the only person in the multiverse that would be happy about this. Then when everybody else finds out about what Morty did, the president implies that he did something just as bad when he was 14, saying we were all 14 once, but come on. They also turn the incest baby joke into a horse person chud joke when Rick sort of completes the sentence and the chud soldier says, wait, who told you? Like he has his own incest baby and thinks that he's just been outed. They make the reference to thriller movies with the countdown clock trope, like the clock only shows you the last couple of seconds. Then Professor Shibubu promptly yeets himself off the building, killing himself. I think just to continue underscoring how over the top ridiculous the plot is. Rick makes more references to this ancient war that's been going on between humans and the Chuds, saying that he always knew that Morty's horniness would lead to an apocalyptic war between humans and cannibalistic horse people. You can see that their chandelier is made of human skulls from the people that they've eaten. There are also a lot of human skulls around the king's throne as well. When they make the reference to Morty being a scorpion in a Navajo fable, that's actually a direct reference to the real life fable of the scorpion and the frog. In that tale, the scorpion winds up stinging the frog despite agreeing not to do that, saying that despite his intentions in their agreement, he can't change his nature. But then Rick turns it into a big Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man burn by using him as an example that people can change their nature. Like I said, another big Marvel joke, big Marvel burn during the episode, with the writers taking a big shot at all the trouble that Robert Downey Jr. got into during the 90s because of his addictions. When he says that Robert Downey Jr. was waking up in bushes and his agent had to catch him with a butterfly net, that's actually a reference to something that he did in real life. He wound up going on a bender once and waking up in a stranger's house, like he broke into someone's house while they were high, didn't know how he got there, and then wound up getting arrested. But that was many years before he ever became Iron Man, came into the MCU. By that time, he kind of turned his life around. Then things really go off the rails with this storyline when they set up the idea that Rick apparently slept with the Chud Princess, Poinetta, and she's pregnant with his horse person baby. And they just play it like it's not that big a deal. Rick slept with a planet. He's also made references in last week's episode to sleeping with a bunch of alien queens all the time. So he does do stuff like this on the regular. Then, like I said, Morty sort of calls that out. Like, this is out there even for us. Like, this is ridiculous even for a Rick and Morty episode. I also love that when Princess Ponyetta reveals her child with Rick, his reaction is to admit that he has a substance abuse problem. Like, he probably got super drunk one night, went on a bender, and then wound up sleeping with her. But this whole subplot kind of goes full soap opera. Like I said, it kind of goes full Game of Thrones telenovela. They could turn this into its own spin-off show. And I also love the little details that the king adds to this too. Like, a relationship with Rick is bad, not just because it's a human and a horse person, but because Rick is an old man and she's young. As if somehow that's worse than them being a bunch of horse people. Back in Vegas, when the president is deputizing everyone, they do this amazing Kevin joke. He is a real-life comedian performing in Vegas. The whole thing with the Nancy Reagan reference, I think is them just joking about how in real life when Reagan was president, his wife Nancy Reagan spent a lot of time trying to sanitize television, movies, and media, like get rid of a lot of graphic stuff. So I think the idea is that them taking out all these monsters is a metaphor for taking the episode from NC-17 down to like a PG-13 rating. When the Chud Kingdom shows up rallying at the castle, that's just a reference to the Tournament of Kings, the Excalibur Casino in Vegas in real life. I've never been there, but it's an actual thing. The president makes another horse reference when he calls Rick the son of a mare, a female horse. Also, Rick comes in riding on top of Ponyetta. They write off this centuries-long conflict between their peoples, so I don't know how soon they're going to be bringing the Chuds back. But this is their way of wrapping up the storyline where the president was about to declare all-out war on them. 
When Beth and Summer ride the monsters into the casino, the sign above the door says loose slots. That's another sex joke. The Sultan of Swoon sign on the Mirage in the background is a Frank Sinatra reference because he performed a lot in Vegas over his lifetime. Then Summer implies that she's been doing a whole lot of butt stuff on the DL, but she's always been very open about being a total freak in bed, so this shouldn't be that surprising. Sticky winds up killing the queen, but then fertilizes Summer's egg anyway, and then the president just kind of wipes his hands of it, firing it off into space, like, well, it's space's problem now, because we're not killing it, it's an election year, which is another abortion joke. Like, the president doesn't want to piss off all the pro-life voters. And they pay off that whole Kathy Ireland scene at the end, and it's actually Christina Ricci, special guest star, playing Kathy Ireland during this. They also use this to pay off the joke about Morty lying at the beginning of the episode, like, you should always tell the truth, even if it's going to hurt someone. Then they subvert the whole trope of the moral message that happened at the end of a lot of animated series episodes when Rick calls it out saying, no, no, we're not doing that. I have my own epilogue to deal with because of the whole horse baby that he has with Princess Ponyetta. They telegraph a little bit where this is going just because of the way the rest of the episode is wrapping up. But they have the whole joke about Rick becoming an honest man, giving up his adventures, starting a new family, a new horse family with Ponyetta, but then instantly take it back, saying the Chuds are born, fully formed, and we won't have to raise it. So they kind of both wipe their hands of it, almost high-five each other, and then walk away. Like, peace out, see you later, no worries, no harm, no foul. The whole joke with the red button shout-out saying that was easy is actually Dan Harmon's voice sort of calling out how it was super easy for the writers to write themselves out of this corner. This is their way of avoiding having to deal with Rick's chud son in future episodes, but technically he's still alive, so it would be funny if they made some verbal references to all of these children, like even Morty and Summer's child in space. But then the post credit scene does pay off the joke about Morty and Summer's baby, and it turns into a big Star Child reference from 2001 Space Odyssey. They even play some of the theme music from the movie, The Spake Zarathustra, and like I said, he's still alive, just floating around there in orbit, so we'll see if they have some joke about him in a future episode. But it seems like next week's episode 5 is going to be another Rick and Jerry episode. If you did spot any Easter eggs in this episode that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. My full Loki episode 6 finale video will post Wednesday, and my full Rick and Morty season 5 episode 5 video will post next Monday, just like normal. Everyone click here for that brand new Loki deleted scenes video, and click here for my full Loki episode 5 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.